And it's time. Hey, hi everybody. You know me, I'm Charlie Walden, a.k.a. The Possum, and you're here at Camp Possum and the KDHX Folk School Saturday Morning Workshops. Thanks again to KDHX Folk School for providing us uh, with the opportunity to do this for you this morning and all the other previous mornings we've done. It's been great fun. Also, thanks to the Missouri Arts Council for supporting this activity today. So we're doing great, folks. We've got to get more people in here, but, but I think we're going to go right ahead and uh, do this tune. It's called the Stump Tail Dog. It's uh, from a very famous Illinois fiddler of my generation. Uh, Chirp Smith plays it all the time. I think it's on one of his records. I think it's on the record called Prairie Dog, maybe. No, it's on Midwestern Harvest. It was one of his CDs. If you listen to that CD, by the way, you'll hear Pat playing the piano on there and playing the uh, little pump organ, rather. So uh, go check that out, Midwestern Harvest by Chirp Smith. But let's move right along now to this tune here in the key of G called the Stump Tail Dog. And I've got, uh, there's Dots and there's Tab. So everything you need, everything you need. Do, 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 do. This is a really nice tune. It's a good jam session tune. You can show it to your friends. If you if people are playing at the level they are when they come to Camp Possum, you'll be able to show it to your friends right away. So let's let's play through it once. It's got a few. Uh, it's got some eighth notes in it. You know, so it's not a real super notey tune, but it's a nice super rhythmic tune. And uh, I just like it. Stump tail dog. Here we go. G. We've got two Kims here, joined at opposite ends of the earth. They're a long way from each other. Wave at each other, guys. All right, so uh, let's play the Stump Tail Dog. So we're in the key of G. It's, you can hear it's not a hard tune, uh, but it's a fun tune. I like, once in a while, it's okay to learn a tune that's not so, so hard, don't you think? It uh, gives you a break from learning all the hard ones. All right, so, so if it's a G here, let's do this a little bit of something here. Let's play our G scale. So we're going to start on the open G. And we're going to go up to the G on the on the uh, D string, just one octave of G. And for those of you who don't know, we're going to use this finger pattern right there. Okay, so going to be, people here now know all that stuff, but let's just review it anyway for pe folks who might be joining us and might not know. All right, so oh, there goes the waving, see? So we're going to go... Tapping of the foot. Here we go. Good. Now we're going to go on up to the next octave. So on the A and A and E string, it's this finger pattern, right? So let's play. We're going to sound like this. So we're going to go from here all the way up to. The B, a fourth finger on the uh, on the east on the E string, so it's going to be. <laughs> See, I can make a 
mistake too. All right, so let's let's play that uh, through. One tap, one note per tap. Ready, go. <laughs> Let's see what uh, what is the range on this tune. Oh, let's do the arpeggios first. So we're going to play all the G's, B's, G's, B's, and D's from the open G to the fourth finger on the E string. It's going to be like this. Ready, go. G's, B's, and D's. Now, uh, let's look at what the range is on this tune here. So I think the lowest note in the tune is the open D. The highest note in the tune is the third finger or A on the E string. So, we're gonna, so the tune only runs from here to here. Okay. Let me play through it one more time and then we'll go phrase by phrase. And you'll, you're going to have it in no time. <laughs> My dog, I'm using a fork. <laughs> Is it a fork from the kitchen drawer or is it an actual tuning fork? Those work, you know, if you if you grind around on them and tune it properly. Yeah, the dogs that you know that the I'm I'm going back to once my once my electronic tuners die, except on the mandolin, I can't go there. I'm going go back to the tuning fork because these I don't like these lithium ion batteries. You have to dispose of them properly and these cost, you know, now like 25 bucks and I can get that good Planet Waves tuning fork for about $8. Never needs a battery, you know. It's always ready, always ready to go. So, so I'm going old school. As soon as when that, whenever these finally kick the bucket, I'm going back to the old school tuning fork. I've got a couple of them laying around here. All right. So, uh, but th yeah, they, they they work. I used one for you know 25 years until they invented electronic tuners you could put in your fiddle case. So I got by somehow. All right. So let's play this tune one more time. Look at this tune. Uh, if you're if you're into reading the music, you know there's a couple of cool figures here. If not, just listen to them from a rhythmic standpoint. But this this figure appears a lot. In other words, two sixteenth notes followed by an eighth. It's all over this tune. It's everywhere in this tune. That little figure. You don't see that too often where you end on a longer note. But I like it. And then uh, uh, that little guy, eighth, sixteenth with a dotted eighth, like. Yeah. Okay. So, so some interesting little figures in here. Uh, let's learn uh, the the last two bars of the tune are the same on each part. So let's learn that first. So it's the part that goes. C on the A string, open E, then B on the A string, open to the D. So it's open A, end on the G. Let's play that again. 
right, so now let's play that together slow, and then we'll have we'll have conquered the last two bars of both parts of the tune. So ready up on the C here. One more time. Okay, so now uh, let's go on and start back at the beginning. So the first note is an open D pickup note. Ba da 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 da. That's the first bar. La da 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 da. So it's two G's and two open D's. Open D, G. Then. So it's G B A G B D. Repeat that again. That's how you end that last little bit. Just listen right here. You've got, you've got, oh, you've got so much of it already. Instead of going. Oh man, that's the whole first part. I can't believe you're you're there already. Let's play through it a couple times slow. It's not a hard tune. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Good job, kids. Here we go. second part. So now let me introduce you to a concept you may not have heard of before and that is a ghost note. And if you had the, the dots out you'd notice that a couple of the notes have uh, parentheses around them and that means to indicate to play that as a ghost note. What is a ghost note? A ghost note is a note that is implied or sometimes uh, uh, just played softer and you know a lot of hay has been made about these ghost notes by people who are analyzing the music, but mostly they're due to some difficulty in bowing. If I listen to, you know, old fiddler recordings and they come to a part where a ghost note is used, it's not a device necessarily that they're doing intentionally. It's because the bowing is difficult there and they've worked it out some way and so that that note just comes in a little bit quieter. I know now that people are intent on teaching and analyzing uh, fiddle music that they're teaching people to play ghost notes but in fact they're just an I, I my opinion they're just an artifact of the way people played people who aren't trained you know fiddlers uh, that they just were getting over the tune the best way they could and so what would result is a note that was sometimes quieter or even absent and, and implied uh, I'll put up this recording of Stumptail Dog by 
Howard Sims. That's why I noted those in there because if you hear him play it, he's like basically not playing the note. You can hear him moving his bow, and so he does it. Let me just play through the, sec the second part of the tune. I won't, I won't do the ghost notes. Then I'll try to do them as best I can. Probably not very well because, again, I'm intentionally doing something that he was doing as a matter of course in playing the tune. All right, so... So now, so what's indicated on the music is that in the, this note, this will play, I'm just going to play the first bar. And literally, when the guy plays it on the recording, you can't hear this D. It's so quiet. And I don't know how, what he's doing to boat. Maybe he's doing this kind of a boat. So it's, see how it comes in quiet? And then, again, this is a ghost note. So this note, that one right there. So that would be a ghost note too. The beginning of the, of the if you're looking at the music, the beginning of the first bar and the beginning of the second bar of the second part. Those are ghost notes. But you don't have to play them as ghost notes. But I'm just giving it, I'm using this as a teaching moment, you know, because I'm hearing, I see this mentioned a lot in people teaching fiddle tunes, especially Quebecois fiddle tunes and some Irish tunes. They say, oh, that's a ghost note. Well, yeah, okay, it is a ghost note, but it's not a device that someone said, I'm going to write a tune and put a ghost note in it. It's a matter of how the original player or the old time players would have played it. Uh, again, and just trying to work the bowing out as best they could. You know, as they're working it out to suit their playing, and so what, what happens then is that it just comes out that way. So I'm going to teach you the tune without the ghost notes, but now you know where they are, and I'll, I'll put up that recording uh, where you can uh, take it, give it a listen on our Patreon. Uh, when, I, when I repost this as an individual lesson on my Patreon, I'll put in uh, a little bit of that ghost note business, all right? Okay, so let's try the second part. So now the second part goes like this. So first note, there's no pickup notes, and the first note is a D. It could be a ghost note, but we're not going to play it like that. So it's, it's D, G, G. Hey, that's the first bar. And then the next bar is G, D. And like this, and then and that is a very unusual rhythmic figure in a fiddle tune to have a, a, a long note on the end of each part of that bar. It goes boo -de boo -de boo -de boo -de boo -de boo -de So the notes are D, G, D, E, D, B. Open A to the A on the E string. And then E, G, E, D, B. So it's... And that 
that's the whole tune. Wow. Let's play through it a couple times slow, and then I'm going to get the mandolin out. All right, here we go. Stay right with me now. I can hear it. You're sounding really good. Bye.